Hi, it's mentor jeweler Joel McFadden, and I want to talk today about the different optics that you can use at the jeweler's bench. So, of course, the bare minimum that you should use at a bench is safety glasses because with the rotary tools and the torches and everything, you've got stuff flying up and you got to protect your eyes. Eyes and your fingers are the most important aspect of being a jeweler or making jewelry. So the next thing I recommend that people get is some little inexpensive reading glasses. These are my wife's and these will protect your eyes, but they'll also magnify what you're working on. And you can buy these for a few dollars at a convenience store. Um, one of the things you want to look for is magnification and working distance. One of the problems that I do see with reading glasses is they have a very short working distance, which means you've got to get really close to what you're working on. So, um, but if you look, you'll see that they're typically 1.2, which means they're 1.2 times the magnification, plus a working distance of five or six or seven inches. Now, the standard in the jewelry industry for my entire lifetime has been the Optivisor. These are manufactured by a company in, in the United States and uh, these things last forever and they're like the best. One of the advantages of an Optivisor is that uh, it can sit on your head, doesn't bother your face, so you can wear a mask or you can wear prescription glasses. If you have prescription glasses, you can wear them under it and just push it down and wear it with it. And uh, they're terrific. But a couple things here I want to point out. One is on the corner of the lens, there's a number. And the number is going to correspond with what that Optivisor's magnification is. Optivisors come with six magnifications. I'll post this in the bottom. From 2 to 10. Uh, so I'm using a number 5, which is a focal length of 8 inches and a 2.5 and times magnification. And what that means is that the object appears to be two and a half times larger than looking at it with the naked eye. So with the working distance with an Optivisor, they've been around a long time and that's why bench pins are sitting up. Bench pins on the work surface on most jewelers benches is high because this is right here the distance where everything is in focus for me. And so that's why I would be working right here. And it's not too stressful, but you'll notice that my, my neck is bent and I'm a little bit hunched up a lot. I do sit really high in my chair. A lot of people sit quite a bit lower like this. And that's something you should consider is raising and lowering your chair. Another thing to note is I recently found out that if you buy an Optivisor, Optivisor is a branded name. And there's a lot of knockoffs called uh, headband loops and, and things like that. But you want to look for the blue lenses. The blue lenses are ground glass and they have a few advantages. One is they're crisper view, but the other thing is, is that they don't get damaged by uh, sharp pieces of metal and things flying up and, and getting in the thing. So. After the Optivisor, which I would, uh, by the way, Optivisors run about $48 to $50 in the United States. Uh, and I think they're really worth the money. They'll last forever. And one last thing is, if you get a pair and you don't like the lens, you can actually pop these lenses out and change them. Next step up are binocular optics. And there's two common types. There's the Obiras, which are not is easily available. That's what these are, as they were a few years ago. Um, and Zeiss lenses. And these run $500 to $600. And they, uh, they sit on your eyes. They do two and a half magnification on average. And you can change them to increase or lower it. So the object is going to look two and a half times the size as it would normally. But what's great about these is that the working distance here is quite a bit higher so I can be a little further away from my working area and I get pretty good magnification it's it's a little bit better magnification than you have with your Optivisor another great thing that we use these for a lot is um, when we're soldering we can solder our objects right here and we can see what we're doing with a pretty high magnification 
And what we look for when we're soldering is when does the uh, solder itself flow and make sure that the metal isn't reticulating or uh, turning glassy. If, it, if your metal turns glassy, that means it's getting really close to the melting temperature. And with the magnification, you can see those things. When you're setting stones, uh, if you have a fragile stone that maybe has a sharp corner or maybe an inclusion in it, uh, you want to know really when those prongs or whatever the bezel touches the stone and things are secure. You don't want to be guessing and go by feel. If you're setting little tiny diamonds, diamond melee or something like that, really you want to be able to see how everything's going. And the magnification is such a big help, and we use these a lot. Now, the next step up is... Oh, another advantage of these guys is that a lot of times when I go to gem shows, like I'm getting ready to go to Tucson in a few weeks, I'll take these with me because this will allow me to really see well what the stones look like, how the fastening junctions are, and all the details. This really help a lot. And if you want to look at jewelry at a jewelry show or something and see how well it's really made, these help a lot. And you can put these in your pocket. They're a little less cumbersome than wearing an Optivisor. I have seen people go to jewelry shows and walk around with their Optivisors, but uh, I think that the Bonaco lens is a little bit better than that. Hey, I had to stop and help a customer with a necklace. But So we're back. We're going to talk about the creme de la creme of optics for the jewelry industry, and that is microscopes. So I picked up my Meji microscope about 25 or 30 years ago. It's uh, a little dated, a little worn out, but wow, what a difference in my setting. I started, started loving doing fishtail and uh, bead set and pave. But what really inspired me, because the microscope is going to run you $2,000 or more, but what really inspired me is we started sell, setting in bezels a lot of fragile, expensive stones, like, like some tanzanites and some uh, peribotermolines and things like that. And the stones are really, really expensive. And I thought, it's worth it to see how well I'm setting the stone and how well it's doing for the $2,000. If you think about it, if I save myself from damaging one $7,000 stone, this thing's paid for itself. Now, there's a couple things about microscopes. We talked about the optivisors. We talked about the uh, binocular uh, vision. They give you two, two and a half. Reading glasses give you like a one and a half magnification. The microscope is going to give you somewhere in the 10 to 30 time magnification. And I'm going to put a video example of what it's like to work under a microscope so that if that's something that you aspire to doing, you'll have some idea what it'll look like. The uh, probably the best selling microscope on the market right now is the Leica A60. It's a fantastic scope. So one of the first things I started doing was, was the little pave work, like this little guy right here. And you can see how tiny these little stones are. But I remember when I was working with it for the first time under the microscope, it looked like my little 52 round bottom graver was a backhoe removing metal and it just you know when i and i thought it was okay but when i pulled it out and looked at it with the naked eye it was amazing when i looked at it at two per, two times magnification with the optivisor it was still amazing and i you know when you're looking to see really clean nice engraving or tiny stone setting or setting expensive stones this is definitely the way to go the other advantage that I found, however, to the microscope for setting, especially when I was doing a lot of setting, was if you're using an optivisor, you're going to be sitting up here and you're going to be hunched over working. And you'll see that I'm holding my elbow up and my neck is slightly bent. And I would get pinched nerves in here. They were actually talking about fusing some vertebra in my neck. But when I shifted to the microscope, what I found is that I sit up to the bench and I work at this level now so that my back is straight, my legs are straight, and my head is just slightly tilted down. The microscope is doing so much of the work for me. The big thing is now, instead of my arms being up, my arms are down. And that allows you to work in a more comfortable environment and to work a lot longer. So it's a really great production tool. Um, 
This is a separate ring light that I have. This is an option that you can put, and these ring lights are great because they're uh, non-directional lighting. You have your objective lens here, and then you have your eye lenses here, and these are all adjustable. So when you do buy a microscope, if you do decide to do, do so, make sure you get you speak with somebody that can give you the proper objective lens and the proper uh, eyepiece lenses. The eye lenses are going to determine the level of magnification that you have, and the objective lens is going to determine the working area. Now, what separates a bench microscope like a Meji or a Leica from a stone grading microscope that you might have gotten from GIA or somebody is those are designed to work right here and look at stones, and these are designed to work right here. Usually, when we work on this, I'm using uh, either a a ball vise or I'm using this and you can see this is just really comfortable. So I'll be inserting some details about the different levels of magnification, some examples. I've got some video that we did through uh, actually a Leica, not this piece, and you can see how much magnification there is there. And uh, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and uh, that way you'll get notifications of all the new videos I come out with. Thank you. So I made this little graphic so you can see at the top we have a ring I recently did with no magnification. Uh, then the next one is reading glasses at a 1.5 magnification. The next one is the Optivisor that I use at a 2.5 magnification. And then binocular glasses at a 2.75 magnification. And then a microscope at a 20 power magnification. So this is a piece of video that was provided to me by engraver.com that I work with and this is demonstrating the Leica microscope and the pulse graver. This is a silver band that we're Pave setting two millimeter round CZs in and I think you can get a really good sense of how much magnification you get with the microscope and how much easier it is to work especially with these smaller two millimeter stones and even smaller stones. And one thing I forgot to add about the microscope is that it has the ability to change the power of magnification and the zoom level on the fly with just turning a knob and that, that is another advantage that it has over all the other optics that have fixed magnification. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this was helpful.